Thanks for joining us for Facebook Live this week. We're coming into the end of the new year and it's Friday, just a little shy of 1.30, so we wanted to get started. Today, I'd really like to talk about something that I think is important for most people. Whether you make New Year's resolutions or not, goal setting is an important part of growing as a person, growing in your relationships, in your lives, and achieving things that you'd like to achieve. So at this time of year, many people start to think about resolutions and what they're going to do over the course of the next year. And I'd really like to encourage you to consider it not just a resolution, but really setting goals about what you want to achieve. <clears throat> and this important piece, a lot of people hit their resolutions really hard in the first month, maybe two, and then tend to fall off the bandwagon. And I think a lot of people don't necessarily take the time to consider why these resolutions fall apart as quickly as they do, and what gives the sticking power to those goals for those that make it all the way through the year. So what I did is I put together some of the top tips that I give my patients when we're setting goals in the office. And I think that a lot of these tips can also be very important in terms of setting these resolutions. The first tip that I have is starting with why. The big thing about this is this keeps you motivated much longer than that initial kickoff period. Whether your goal is weight loss, whether it's health, maybe it's making a specific lifestyle change, Maybe it's developing new relationships or working hard on a relationship that might be struggling. Whatever that happens to be, let's talk about why. Let's take health or fitness because that's the most common thing we see. But let's say the goal is to lose weight or to increase muscle mass or um, to make some dietary changes. A lot of people jump on these as big goals for the aesthetic purposes. They wanna look better. They wanna feel better in, those, in their clothes. And those things are important. That may be enough to jumpstart the goal, but it probably is not gonna be enough to give you the sticking power because those changes do not happen quick enough and they don't have a strong enough resounding reason with most of us to have that stick. So instead, really consider why. Yeah, maybe you wanna look better in your clothes or lose a little bit of weight or feel a little bit more energetic, but what about being able to play with your kids or having health so that you can play with your grandchildren as your grandchildren kind of come up in age. Think about a little bit deeper of why that change is important to you and important to the things that you enjoy doing. If you keep asking yourself why and you keep digging deeper, you're more likely to find the really true deep hearted reason and that's gonna give you your sticking power to stay motivated longer. The second tip that I give is small changes build habits. So a lot of people will try to just do a complete 180. Maybe you're making dietary changes. You have a horrible diet right now coming through the holiday season with Christmas cookies and all that kind of stuff. And so you decide that you're just gonna complete 180 and you're gonna deprive yourself of everything that you enjoy and you're not gonna eat any sweets and you're just gonna eat really, really healthy and clean. That's not necessarily bad for a good kickoff period to kind of get you jump started and, and help you get going, but it's not sustainable long-term. The better way to go about it is to pick small changes that can form habits that you can build upon. So instead of trying to completely turn over that diet, pick something small. Maybe try drinking you know, an extra glass of water every morning, make a habit out of it, and then try to see if you can add an extra glass of water at lunch, make a habit out of it. An extra glass of water later in the day, make a habit out of it. And before long, now you're actually staying hydrated the way that you're supposed to. That small change that then becomes a habit, makes it easier to make lifelong changes that'll stick with you. The third tip that I have is try to add what you enjoy. Many people look at their resolutions or their goals as being restrictive. They pull things away that they shouldn't have. Again, not all bad. Might be great at the kickoff to kind of detox from sugar or detox from something that you've been doing too much of but it often doesn't have the sticking power that adding something you enjoy includes. So for example, um, if you're looking at exercise, um, try to pick an activity specifically that you like. Do you like rock climbing? Do you like kayaking? Do you like going for walks with friends? Can you make it social? Are there things that you can add to your life that will give you better staying power in the long run? And instead of feeling deprived, you really work through things by adding things that you enjoy. And then it's not so bad to pull out small things here and there that you need to pull away from. The next thing is to make it visual. The way that our brains are wired is very visually. We respond to images and pictures um, and the emotions that they invoke very, very strongly 
for most people, you will respond to a visual image much more than you respond to words. So by making your goal visual, you're going to have more likelihood of sticking to it. So find a way to clip out a picture of yourself or put an image on your desktop if you work at a computer a lot. Um, it can be something of you, it can be something of the end goal, it can be something of what you want to achieve, but I'd like to take you all the way back to this start with why. Try to make your picture or your image, whatever you're going to use, really hone down to that why. So again, if the goal is weight loss, can you have, find a picture of yourself when you were 20 pounds lighter, but can you also put it next to a picture of you playing with your children? or next to a picture of your grandkids. Don't just have the visual image be of the goal itself. Try to incorporate the why into that visual image and then keep that image very front and center so that every day you spend 30 seconds or a minute taking a look at that image, feeling what it would feel like to achieve it and helping you realize that why and that underlying power of that goal. The next thing I have is accountability. The big thing here is what matters to you. For some people, it's accountability to yourself. For some people, it's accountability to others. So if you are somebody who can be held accountable to yourself, that's fantastic, but you're a small percent of the population. So if that works for you, that's fine. Otherwise, can you find an accountability buddy or somebody that can kind of put their thumb down and say, hey, you didn't achieve what you said you were gonna achieve this week, why not? Let's talk about it. I'm not gonna let you off the hook. Let's find a solution and let's make that change happen. Having a buddy, a family member, a friend, a coach, a mentor. Um, here in the office, we have accountability kind of programs that we use with patients just to give them that little bit of check-in to say, hey, I accomplished something, let's celebrate, or I didn't accomplish something and I need some help to keep that going. The next thing is to stretch yourself. A lot of people try to set small goals, which is what we want to do to build our habits, but they stop there and they make small goals without realizing the big picture. I want to encourage you to pick a goal, an overarching goal that stretches yourself. It pushes you outside of your comfort zone and it helps you grow as a person or like I said, in relationships or toward kind of an end result of where you want to be. By stretching yourself, and then achieving little goals as they become habits toward that end, it's gonna help build your self-esteem, it's gonna help build your confidence, you're gonna be able to go after bigger and bigger and bigger things as you get better at accomplishing those smaller things. So make small changes to build habits, but then also try to pick an overarching goal or an umbrella goal that you kind of break down that's gonna stretch yourself. And by combining those two together, it really helps push you forward. My final tip is to celebrate wins and to stay positive. Many people get really harsh on themselves. If their goal is weight loss and they wanted to lose 20 pounds, maybe they lose eight pounds in the first several months and then they start to get discouraged because it starts pulling off slower or they're not losing the weight that they thought they should or they thought they'd be further ahead. And instead of celebrating the fact that they have just lost eight pounds, they've worked toward that goal, they start to get really negative and hard on themselves for what they haven't achieved. It's really important that you celebrate every little win along your steps towards success and that you really stay positive about those changes. Again, that's gonna give you a lot more longevity, a lot more staying power, that's gonna make those habits stick harder and you're gonna be able to build your confidence and build toward a much more successful end goal. If you can celebrate the good things and where you are now versus where you would have been if you hadn't been challenging yourself toward this goal. So again, I want you to start with why, figure out the underlying reason so that it has more sticking power, make small changes to build your habits, add what you enjoy, make it visual and keep it front and center, and again, make that visual image tie in with your underlying why. Find a way to hold yourself accountable, but make that something that works for you. Stretch yourself by, uh, by going after large goals and umbrella goals and breaking them down into small habits. This is gonna help you build your brain chemistry and build your confidence. And then also celebrate wins and stay positive, even if things aren't going exactly the way that you think they should. I'd like to close with just making you stop, think and consider, what is it that you want from this upcoming year? What can you do to achieve it? And how can you make sure that next year, you're setting bigger goals each year to work toward an end result? 
Thanks for joining us here on Facebook Live. We'll see you in the new year. Join us next Friday at about 1.30 and have a great New Year's.